The UN Security Council is debating the Secretary General's 2022 report on the violation of children's rights in conflict zones, which left out Israel. It documents more than 27,000 serious violations in 24 regions. Well, for more, let's speak to Gabriel Elizondo. He's at UN headquarters for us. Gabriel, a lot of focus in this meeting on Israel and Palestine. Talk us through the contents of this report. Well, this is an annual report. It comes out every year by the Secretary General, it looks at uh, uh, violence against children in the context of armed conflict around the world. And they look at dozens of countries just this year. And this report uh, looked at over 24 different countries. Uh, really, two main highlights. One is that for the first time ever, Russia was put mm -hmm. on this so called blacklist in the annex section of the report uh, due to children that have been killed, 80, according to the United Nations, killed in Ukraine. Uh, it's the first time Russia has been, uh, 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 a, secu a Security Council permanent member has been put on this so-called blacklist. But also looking closely at Israel and Palestine as well, this report uh, pointing out that 40 two Palestinian children were killed by Israeli security forces last year alone. So we expect to hear from both the Israeli and Palestinian ambassadors during this meeting at some point. There are over uh, 40 different uh, countries expected to speak at this meeting. But clearly, uh, as this moves on, we do expect to hear from the ambassadors of both Israel and Palestine, where they will make reference to this, especially in the context of recent events in Janine. Gabriel, if the UN confirms Israel is responsible for killing Palestinian children, why isn't Israel included on the Secretary, Secretary General's so-called blacklist? Yeah, that's a question that a lot of people are asking and have been asking for many years because Israel has never been included on this blacklist uh, that the Secretary General puts out. Uh, Human Rights Watch, other organizations have been very critical of this. The answer is because Israel has quite a bit of power here at the United Nations mm -hmm. and elsewhere, and they use that power and their influence, if you will, uh, to basically signal that they would potentially boycott some UN organizations if they were put on this blacklist. Also, there's pressure behind the scenes from Israel, Israel's ally, the United States, uh, also to not put Israel on uh, that blacklist. So far, the Secretary General has said that uh, he's watching it very closely, uh, but uh, not, uh, Israel is not put on that blacklist, even though uh, the Secretary General in his report points out that Palestinian children are killed by Israeli security forces. He just takes them off of that annex, which is certainly very significant. Gabriel Elizondo, watching that meeting and that debate for us at the UN. Thank you, Gabriel. Well, Israel's omission from that so-called list of shame has drawn criticism from rights organizations. Last year was one of the worst for Palestinian children. The latest Defense for Children report found that Israeli forces and settlers shot dead 44 Palestinian children in the occupied West Bank last year. Most were killed in Ramallah and Janine. In 2021, the rights group recorded 78 deaths and nine in 2020. So far this year, at least 33 Palestinian minors have been killed, three in recent days. Well, let's speak to Ayad Abu Ektaish. He's a child advocate. He joins us now from Ramallah. Ayad, as we were just hearing there from Gabriel, Russia was added to the blacklist, but Israel was not. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's clear that this list is um, uh, based on political reasons, not the human rights or humanitarian law reasons. And uh, I believe that the uh, uh, UN itself is complicit in uh, this crime because Israel, as a result of its uh, uh, history since the year 2000 until now, it should be included in that list since uh, the establishment of uh, uh, the uh, 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 the uh, monitoring the situation and armed conflict situation uh, since the year 2000 until now the Israeli uh, uh, army and uh, the Israeli settlers killed more than 2,270 Palestinian children so far this year. Uh, 35 Palestinian children were killed, and uh, during uh, uh, among them, 13 f were from uh, Jenin. And during the last mm -hmm. military assault against Jenin, uh, 
uh, four Palestinian children were killed. So we believe that Israel should be included. And uh, we believe the Israeli army is the most appropriate army to be included uh, uh, in the list of uh, the UN Secretary, Secretary General for uh, armies and armed groups uh, that violate children's mm -hmm. rights because of their hysterical practices and not abiding to the uh, international humanitarian law standards, mainly the uh, principle of distinction, proportionality, mm -hmm. and necessity. And this was very evident through their conduct in Jenin uh, camp uh, during let the me, last... Uh, let me the, ask you about that, Ayad, because as you say, a number of those killed in Jenin in the last two days were under 18. And as you say, dozens of children were killed by Israeli forces last year. Has the omission of Israel from this list created perhaps more of a sense of impunity? I think uh, uh, it's uh, a green light from uh, the international community for Israel to go ahead with uh, its atrocities against Palestinian children in the occupied Palestinian territories. Because as long as there is no accountability for their practices, Israel will go on on these practices against Palestinian children. So uh, we believe that uh, it's the role of the international community to put more pressure and sanction Israel for these practices. And as long as there is no accountability for the Israeli soldiers and for Israel, uh, this will uh, implode Israel to uh, keep on uh, in its atrocities against uh, Palestinian civilians, among them children. Well, speaking of accountability, we heard from Jeffrey Robertson earlier, a former United Nations war crimes judge, and he highlighted that you need independent, objective access in order to assess whether war crimes have been committed, including those against children. And Israel is refusing that access? Uh, I think that uh, all the uh, uh, the reports of uh, uh, commissions that have been established by the UN uh, Human Rights Councils came to the same conclusion that Israel commit war crimes and crimes against uh, uh, humanity. But the problem of to translate these uh, uh, recommendations and outcome into action against Israel in order to pressure it to stop these practices against. And uh, we believe uh, that the international community at uh, its disposal, they have a lot of tools in order to uh, uh, sanction Israel like diplomatic or political or economic and other sanction against Israel in order to force it to uh, abide to its legal obligation during. Uh, but the problem, for example, during uh, the uh, last assault against mm -hmm. uh, 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 against Jenin camp, uh, there was support uh, for Israel from uh, international community, mainly the U.S., when they regard that Israel uh, uh, has the right to defend its security. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, the justification for Israel and uh, 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 committing these crimes against Palestinians among children under the pretext that uh, the, the main purpose is to counter terrorism uh, we believe that uh, 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 it should not be stand uh, from the point of international mm -hmm. humanitarian law. Uh, so Israel uh, mm -hmm. has uh, obligation, and this obligation should be protected and respected. Ayed Abu Ektaish, there, a child advocate, speaking to us from Ramallah. Thank you for joining us here on Al Jazeera, sir. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you.